ever feel like uh, you're just drowning in your inbox? Like you're constantly fighting this losing battle against like this never ending flood of emails. It's a pretty common feeling, I think, these days. Yeah. Our inboxes, they've kind of become like this, like a digital to do list, you know, and they're always just demanding our attention. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of ironic when you think about it. It's, it's like nice all these bells and whistles and the fancy formatting, the endless notifications, they're supposed to make email easier, right? Like more user friendly. Mm -hmm. But honestly, sometimes it feels like it just makes things worse, more chaotic. Yeah, it's classic information overload, right? Yeah. More isn't always better. Yeah. Especially with something like as essential as communication. Right. And I think that's why today's deep dive is so fascinating. We're going back to basics. Back to a time when email was just about, well, email. 1995, to be precise. The year Mutt, a text-based email client for Unix-like systems, first graced our computer screens. Or rather, our terminals. Okay, so I have to admit, text-based doesn't exactly scream user-friendly to me. But you know what else wasn't user-friendly? Dial-up internet. And yet, here we are. And there's a certain beauty in that simplicity. You know, remember, this is long before touch screens, like before we expected to interact with our computers by like poking and swiping these glowing rectangles. So how did people even use MUT? Was it like deciphering hieroglyphics? Not quite, but it definitely required a different mindset. You see, MUT operates entirely through keyboard commands. It's all about efficiency, like minimizing your keystrokes and maximizing control. Think of it like learning a new language. But this language just speaks directly to your computer's core. Okay. Intriguing, but also a little intimidating. I mean, I barely remember the keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste. That's okay, because for those who are willing to learn, Mutt offered an unparalleled level of customization and power. In fact, it's kind of funny. Its tongue-in-cheek slogan kind of gives you a sense of its philosophy. All male clients suck. This one just sucks less. Well, that's certainly one way to put it. But it does speak to a certain truth. Back then, just like now, Many email clients were just bloated with features, trying to be everything to everyone. And that was like, here's the bare minimum, now you go make it your own. Exactly. Michael Elkins, Mutt's creator, envisioned a tool that would empower users, giving them the flexibility to tailor their email experience to their exact needs. Okay, I'm starting to see the appeal here. But let's get into, like, the nitty-gritty. How does Mutt actually work? This Wikipedia article mentions something about supporting different email protocols and mailbox formats. Right. So under the hood, Mutt handles all the standard stuff. POP3 for downloading emails, IOM app for accessing them on a server. And you can work with different ways those emails are stored, like Mbox or MailDeer, which were more common back then. It's like it's the engine that powers your email, regardless of the format. So it's speaking the same language as other email clients, just in a different dialect, so to speak. <laughs> Precisely. But here's where things get interesting. Instead of burying you in menus and buttons, Mutt gives you direct control through keyboard shortcuts. Want to reply to an email? Hit R, forward it. Hit F, archive it. You guessed it, A. So it's like a secret code for being super efficient with your email. And I imagine once you get the hang of it, it becomes like second nature. Absolutely. And it's not just about single keystrokes. You can create custom key combinations, what we call macros, to perform complex actions with, like lightning speed. So we're talking about customizing keystrokes, creating macros. It's like Mutt isn't just an email client. It's like a blank canvas for efficiency. You're getting it. And this level of control, it extends even further with something called hooks. Hooks. Okay, that sounds a little intimidating. It's not as scary as it sounds. Think of hooks like setting up tripwires in your inbox. Tripwires. Yeah. So you define a condition, like any email from my boss, and then you attach an action to it, like move it to the VIP folder and mark it as urgent. Okay, that's actually genius. So no more frantically searching for that important email in like a mountain of unread messages. Mutt just handles it for you automatically. Exactly. And this kind of automation, it can be applied to all sorts of tasks. You could automatically sort emails by project, filter out spam based on specific keywords. You can even trigger external scripts to like process incoming messages. Whoa, okay, external scripts. Now we're really getting into power user territory. We are, but it highlights the beauty of Mutt's design. Because it embraces plain text and a command line interface, it integrates seamlessly with other tools that thrive in that environment. Speaking of which, this Wikipedia article mentions something about using grep with Mutt for super fast searching. I've heard whispers of grep in like tech circles, but it sounds like something that only like hardcore programmers use. Mm. Grep might sound intimidating, but it's essentially a super-powered search function. 
Imagine being able to instantly find any email containing a specific phrase, even if it's buried deep within a long thread. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see how that would be useful, especially if you're dealing with a massive archive of emails. Exactly. Let's say you're a lawyer and you're trying to find a specific clause mentioned in like hundreds of legal documents emailed yeah. back and forth over months. Oh, yeah. With Mutt and Grep, you can pinpoint that information in seconds. So it's like having a team of research assistants at your fingertips, except they work for free and they never take coffee breaks. Precisely. And this power extends to Mutt's handling of email threading as well, which, let's be honest, can be a nightmare in many email clients. Tell me about it. Trying to follow a long email chain with multiple replies and forwards, it's like trying to untangle a bowl of spaghetti. Mutt brings order to that chaos. It intelligently groups related messages together so you can easily follow the flow of conversation, even if it spans days, weeks, or even months. So instead of endlessly scrolling through this jumbled mess, you can actually, like, focus on the content of the discussion? Precisely. And because Mutt is so lightweight and efficient, it can handle even the most monstrous email threads without breaking a sweat. So we've covered how Mutt handles incoming emails, but what about composing them? I'm picturing something very bare bones, like no fancy formatting or anything. So we're on the right track. <laughs> Remember, Mutt is all about plain text. It's a throwback to a time when email was purely about the words, not about fonts and colors. So no emojis then? Not natively, no. But that's part of its charm. It forces you to be more deliberate with your words to focus on clarity and conciseness. You know, there's something refreshing about that. In a world of endless distractions, maybe a little bit of digital minimalism is what we all need. Perhaps. But for those who absolutely must have their formatting, MUD allows you to call upon external text editors to craft your messages. Okay, so you've got options. But even with all these cool features, let's be honest. It's 2024. We have sleek email clients with built-in calendars, to-do lists, video conferencing, the works... Why would anyone choose Mutt in today's world? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And the answer might surprise you. All right, so we've journeyed back to 1995. We've explored this land of keyboard shortcuts and grep commands. And um, I have to say, I'm starting to see the appeal of Mutt, even in, like, our modern world of shiny apps and instant gratification. But I still have this, like, nagging question. Is there really a place for Mutt in 2024? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, sure, it's efficient, it's customizable, but is it really practical for, like, the average person? Well, average is a relative term, isn't it? Remember how we talked about Mutt's minimalist design? That might seem archaic in some ways, but in today's world of data breaches and, like, privacy concerns, it suddenly seems kind of, well, avant-garde. Right. Less code, fewer features. Often that means fewer vulnerabilities, right, for hackers to exploit. Precisely. And let's not forget, Mutt is open source. That means its code is freely available for anyone to inspect, to audit to improve. It's like having this global community of security experts constantly looking out for your inbox. Which is a lot more reassuring than just blindly trusting a tech giant with your entire digital life, right? Exactly. But beyond security, Mutt also represents a different way of thinking about technology. It's about choosing tools that empower you, not ones that try to do everything for you often at the expense of your privacy and your control. It's like the difference between driving a car with all the latest bells and whistles versus like a classic car with a stick shift. You might have to work a little harder, but you're also like more connected to the experience. I love that analogy. And just like learning to drive stick, mastering mutt can be incredibly rewarding. It's about taking ownership of your digital tools, mm -hmm. understanding how they work, bending them to your will. So it's almost like a philosophy, like a way of life. It's about choosing simplicity over complexity, control over convenience. Exactly. And the best part is you don't have to choose between the past and the present. Remember Neil Mutt, the modern fork we mentioned. Right. It's like the best of both worlds. Precisely. Neil Mutt takes the core principles of Mutt, the speed, efficiency, customizability, and updates them for like the 21st century, adding some quality of life improvements without sacrificing that minimalist philosophy. So it's like restoring that classic car, yeah. giving it a fresh coat of paint, maybe a more powerful engine, but keeping the soul of the original design intact. Perfect analogy. And it just goes to show that Mutt's legacy extends far beyond its years. It's a testament to the enduring power of good design, thoughtful engineering, and a commitment to user empowerment. So for our listeners who might be intrigued by this, maybe even a little inspired to try out Mutt or Neo-Mutt for themselves, what would you say to them? Like, is it worth the learning curve? Like any tool, it depends on your needs and your priorities. 
If you're looking for a flashy email client with all the bells and whistles, Mutt probably isn't for you. But if you value speed, efficiency, privacy, and a sense of control over your digital life, well then taking Mutt for a spin might just change the way you think about email. I have to say, after this deep dive, I'm seriously considering it myself. It's a good reminder that sometimes the most powerful tools are the ones that get out of our way and let us focus on what truly matters. I couldn't agree more. Sometimes. Less is truly more. Well said. To our listeners, we've thrown a lot of information your way today about Mutt. We've explored its history, its features, its unique philosophy. Now we turn it over to you. What do you think about Mutt? Is it a relic of the past or a glimpse into the future of technology? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning. And remember, the most important tool in your digital arsenal is your own curiosity.